doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you sitting there with Kid L. Why you mad? The Kid L Podcast. Rocking and rolling, baby money is in the building. What's happening? Yeah, bro? yeah, yeah, yeah. You got my dog, baby Taze, public housing clothing on. That's my guy right Rocking there. Rocking it. Bro, he was, man, I remember we used to go to the gym, me, him, and Scoob, and just, he used to always just bring a bag of that. And I never yeah, thought yeah. that shit would amount to shit, but look what happened. That's All the most not, famous rappers in the world. Are somewhere we... I actually grew up with him. That's my brother, for real, for real. real? Yeah. yeah, he said you guys, uh, he grew up in, uh, everybody just grew up together in one little building, like 20 people. Yeah, yeah, I, my family live, live in the area he's from, so I grew up in a basketball with him. Before we start, I gotta tell you guys about the hottest wing spot in Detroit. Mighty Wings Shop. Last weekend, I ordered a pound of wings and an incredible order of chicken and waffles. Guys, it's beyond this world. They also serve breakfast, pita wraps, quesadillas, and more. Located at 20131 Greenfield, Detroit. Go check out the Mighty Wings Shop. When I look back at you, um, I know you were from, you're from Tall Street, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, growing up in Detroit, everybody's... Um, they know about your family a little bit, but one thing that everybody's like going crazy about is who was your dad because he was a rapper. That's like yeah. one of the most like commented things. Like <laughs> yeah. they keep saying his dad was a rapper. Who was he? But it seems like you keep that low key. Like you're not really trying to get that cat out the bag. Yeah, it ain't like he was just, if he was like if he was a real star. Then you feel what I'm saying? Like, but my dad was just like me. Like he didn't know if he was gonna make it or not. Do he need die young? So yeah. it wasn't like like he was signing. He's I'm hiding that. Like no. Like he was just it, trying out rap, do you feel like? Like he was just Yeah, like, he was a street nigga spitting his life, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about this tour you got coming up, man. I know you skill a baby and Rob Four Nine are going out, man. You guys are about to hit yeah, the road. So it's about to be crazy. Yeah, man, it's looking crazy. Um have you guys how much chemistry do you guys have uh beforehand? Do you guys are you guys like talking or anything like that beforehand, or do you guys just like get ready to hit the beforehand, road? Beforehand, like we already knew each other, so it's yeah. like it make it even better, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like we already been around each other and shit, so it make and skill are really my people for real, for real. Yeah. How far yeah. back do you and Skilla go? When I was like 12, 13. Oh, God damn. Long ass time. Yeah, that's cool as hell. Uh, yeah, man, it's crazy to see Skilla's flourishing too, man. Right? Yeah, going crazy. To see him from the point where, like, if people see old footage of them, they would never have expected to, like, yeah. to see what he turned into now. That's how I go. Yeah. Um, You started a little bit uh, rapping a, uh, pretty young, right, around the age of 13, <laughs> but you got to the point where just a few years ago, your name really got hot. Yeah, it got to going crazy. You know, and it seems like that's what everything started happening for everybody. Everybody was rapping for a long ass time, and then that 2019, 2020 mm-hmm. kicked the dough down. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It seems like it's a timing thing, but it's also just putting in the work and eventually seeing what happens. Mm-hmm. Right? You never know when it's gonna happen. I've been rapping for so long. Yeah, man. Uh, your motivation, I know, partly was you had a family member passing, and that was like the start of it all for you to start taking yeah, it seriously. Yeah, right? my nigga Sos. Um. A lot of rappers tell me that, man. A lot of rappers would tell me like a certain instance will happen. They'll lose somebody, and they it's like they have to get it out somehow. So they use because they usually be the person that was pushing you to go do it in the first place on some wild ass shit. It's yeah. crazy. It's always like that, but it usually be that person. That's why they know you have talent, but you're like bullshitting, right? Hmm? They know you have talent, like the people who are seeing. Yeah, you on you, you they 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 see like you thinking too hard on it. You feel what I'm saying? They see what it can be already. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's important to have people like that in their life. Their perception is so strong, mm-hmm. and they just like know the guidance. But if you didn't do that, um, what do you think? Were, like, what was your mind really going at that time? Basketball, basketball. Yeah. For sure, for sure. I thought I was gonna be in the league. I think everybody thought that though. Everybody thinks they're gonna be in the fucking league. Yeah. <laughs> the only people that made it was like Miles Bridges and Josh, Josh Jackson. <laughs> the only one. I was gonna be that motherfucker for sure, though. No <laughs> questions. What, yeah, what, you got, like, an injury or something like that to stop you? Or just like No, I just got, like, really being a follower, though, on some really, like, I was a kid, so I was just seeing shit that I'd never seen. Then. It was with, with the people that I'd be with every day, so, like, damn, I could do that, too, you feel me? And I always thought, like, damn, you go to school to find a way to make money. I know a way to make money. That shit kind of made me stop going to school. That was dumb, though, because I just went to, like, five prime send-offs, and I'm like, damn, I ain't even go to my own prime. I went with my girl, you feel me? Yeah. But, like, it is crazy. You don't have to go to school if you're making crazy amounts of money. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, I dropped out in, I think, like, the 10th grade. 
Cause I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, like what the fuck am I gonna do? Go to school to become a fucking like, music video? I made director? like fourteen thousand dollars in one day, and I don't think I went back after that. Anything after that was like a <laughs> half a day. You feel me? I come there like, man, this bitch boring as hell. There ain't no nothing I'm on. When did you make the decision? Like, was it when the cash touched your hand? Like, all right, I'm not going back. No, I was already making money. It was I was already like in and out as in like just come. I come one day out the week, four times out of the month. It's crazy. That's bad. Sometimes you only going because motherfuckers calling in. Like, man, he ain't been here. You got to make him come. Did you hate school? Hell no. You didn't mind going to school? Mm-mm. So, oh. what the fuck? Yeah, like, I was, the day that the, I didn't have to go to school again, I, I was the happiest person in the world. I was like, this is the best day of my life. I ain't had bad grades or nothing. I know when you, uh, you were growing up, too, it's like you... I heard this like little thing of you were just watching out for people like that was one of your first like entrepreneurial jobs of just <laughs> watching out for the streets making sure the police don't pull up on your people yeah watching the block and everything like that yeah. um that's one of your first times of making earning your own money right yeah for real for real it's yeah. like you know when the, when, the, when, the, it's the, when we call it the vans the vans just all the police in one van come hit the house they always suit up like a mile away or something like I was always been I was always able to be the nigga that catch them doing that. So go tell everybody so when they come niggas don't have nothing on. Who taught you how to do it? Nothing just come from not seeing niggas want to go to jail. Like them niggas giving me dollars every time I go out, outside. You gotta you gotta warn them. They take them. We don't get no more dollars, shit. And it was like my family, like the whole block I was on was like my real family too. Yeah. So Family, were, sure. you, were you ever wrong? Or like, were you ever like, yeah, yeah, I probably lied a couple times too <laughs> just to get some money. What the fuck? It's not like people are about to pull up and nobody's there. But when it's, when it's true, <laughs> it's true. You feel me? That's like seeing that car that look like the police car, but it ain't the police car. You yeah. get scared still. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You gotta look for the X in the back of the fucking plate these days. That's bro. too long when you're looking at the front of that motherfucker. That bitch gotta <laughs> ride past you first. Yeah. If it's get to the side and they hop out, you're like, damn, I knew it was them. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. When I used to shoot music videos, I used to be so fucking scared of going in the hood that I used to put on these fucking crazy ass, <sighs> thick ass black glasses. And mm-hmm. so when people would walk up on me, I you would like look at them eyes? like I would, I would look at them like I'm the police. I look at like, and I used to turn down my window, but yo, y'all see Johnny anywhere? You know We're I mean, looking for Johnny. How many Walker? times you done been behind that camera and they got the gun pointed at your camera? You probably scared as hell. Worst day of my life, bro. I used to tell them to take the fucking bullet out the head. They're like, oh, what if somebody pulls up? I'm like, man, what the fuck? Like, they're trying to be prepared. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to be prepared. They're fucking, I'm prepared to go to the fucking hospital after this shit. <laughs> um, I think when I, li- I listened to the hymn tape, man, mm-hmm. and Countdown's my favorite track on it. Um, I appreciate it. I loved everything. I loved. I feel like you don't do choruses enough. Choruses. Yeah, like or at all. I've been for working real. on it. Yeah, but like, what's up with that? Like, why aren't you like dabbling? I think it works so perfect with your style. Which is all choruses. No, I'm just saying, like, throw some in that bitch. Like, well, I'm gonna make sure I do it. I think I got a lot of courses in this one though. I mean, it does, but it's like you don't expect it. I'm talking about those like hooks that you hear on the radio type shit and catchy joints. Yeah, it's more mm-hmm. just like that shit. Like, when I drive to it, I'm like, I don't belong listening to this music. <laughs> like that, that's what <laughs> I learned shit. when I listened to you. I'm like, this shit's fire, but I don't understand the inner depths of what the fuck you're talking about in mm-hmm. order for me to know what the fuck's happening. It's too street. It's too street. But it sounds fucking fire at the same time. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Both ways, I appreciate your real perspective of it, and it's fire. No, oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's... Uh, the beat, the I know Hellova produces a lot of your beats. I know you mixed it up with this one, but Hellova's doing a lot of them. But it's it's just bassy. It's it's really. Well, I had like EJ, EJ yeah. beats had majority of this one. Yeah, yeah. EJ hit this one hard. Yeah, you from here. Um, but yeah, I noticed when you make beats with Hellova, it, it's another whole different type of feeling too. You guys mm-hmm. get very very bassy. It's very. Man, yeah, Hellova's doing everything from scratch. Yeah. The beat, everything like. We're going to find what song we want to do over, if it is a sample, everything. Did Helva hit you up when you guys first started working together, or did you reach out to him? It was kind of crazy. I was in the studio with Tay B for like two hours. Then Tay B finally said my name, like, hey, baby, come here. And he stopped to be like, bro, you baby money? I've been here with you the whole time, and you my favorite rapper, bro. Like, it was just crazy as hell. whole time, I'm nervous, though, because he hell of it at the end of the day. Like, he don't even know, like... In my eyes, you big as hell. Like, you the person who got everybody taking off. You feel what I'm saying? So I was nervous at the same time, not saying nothing. He didn't know that was me in the room. So 
that's when he had the studio uh, down downtown like yeah. by Wayne State. Crazy. Yeah, he's a, he has the he has the eye and the ear for artists, bro. For sure, for sure. This guy like just for knows a long the, time. Yeah, he just knows what the fuck's going on. Um, and so when you guys are collaborating and you're doing everything from scratch, um, are you coordinating with him on the beat or are you just letting Helva kind of do his thing? No, he got Helva. It's Helva. I can't tell it. the shit he was doing before I met him is what made me want to do it. You feel me? So you gotta let him do his job. Does he help you orchestrate how you should put uh, for sure, for sure. put everything down? For sure, for sure. I love people in the studio with me. That's gonna tell me like, hey, say that over or say this right here instead of putting it right there. For sure, for sure. Yeah, man. I think uh, that's they're, they're considering hell of a kind of like the gatekeeper aspect of Detroit music right for now. Sure. He's the person to really check in with because you can talk and to not the just Detroit because he everywhere. Facts. When we're talking about this tape in particular, I know you wanted to tell a lot of your story. I know that you figured out that people love to hear your story and yeah. really get bits and pieces of it throughout your music. Um, what was different coming into it this time versus your previous tapes? I don't know. I like. I feel like my other tapes, I was just like trying to aim. Then now you go in there like every at a time, everybody think this song going to be the hit, this song going to be the hit. I think I was doing that a lot. So this time it was more like just freely working. And it's trying to stick to the subject and him, the hustle in me, straight hustle, where I come from, why I hustle like this, where I'm trying to get to. So Yeah. It was fun though. No, yeah, no, it sound it sounded very vibey. Like when you were in the studio, you were in your aura, like you were in that bitch, like really mm -hmm. vibing to it. Uh I think Nick has to adjust your microphone. You get one second. Bring that bitch further back. So um so with this tape, like you're saying, um, for you, it's it wasn't about looking at everything as a hit. It's more about, let me just speak what's going let on. Let me work. Let me work, for sure, for sure. Because you focus on one song, you're going to get stuck on that. And that'll fuck around. Fuck your mind. You're going to have a writer's block. Because you never know what song, like, even though, like, you said one, it's, I feel like this too street. To somebody else, it might be like, all right, I... I I don't understand it, but this one part I like. That's all you need is one part of a song to make a hit. That's what I feel like. That's well, one catchy. Yeah, when you go through the tape, and that's why Countdown struck me because it just caught me. And mm -hmm. there's going to be 15 other songs that catch everybody else. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's just the way it works. Like, even when I listen to old Eminem, there's some shit that he'd be talking about. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? But this, <laughs> shit, but this shit's fire, though, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the process of creating it and everything like that sounds like it was very organic. Um, how's it being received so, so far? I'm seeing the numbers are doing pretty well on YouTube, but are people yeah, like, like reaching out to you and talking to you about it? Yeah, it got me on this tour. That's the best. Yeah. That's you were going to be on the fucking tour anyway, bro. That's the best part. It was a surprise to me if I was going to be on that tour. Bro, you know you're considered like top 10 rappers from Detroit right now, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, I mean, being on that tour... Skilla Baby is one of the hottest rappers in Detroit right now. Right for now, that's my brother. Would you say like No Friends was like your first like semi big hit? Like No New Friends. Yeah, yeah. Everybody likes No New Friends. No New Friends came because my brother was locked up. That's why I say free money. I'm really saying like free my brother on that rich. Then I was gonna do a tape called Free Money, like we just making free money at the same time. But yeah. That, that was the moment where you're hitting an, a substantial amount of views mm -hmm. where you think like, okay, now I have a direction, now I can go somewhere. Yeah, at the time, I remember you was like, at that time it was like 10,000 views, it was crazy. I think that shit got like 50 from when I watched it to like, all right, I feel like everybody watching me. Even though it was only 50,000 people, it's feel like, all right, I got some type of eyes on me. Now it's at like 750,000. I think that's, it's under... Uh, that's where it's at right now? I think about 750, yeah. Yeah, and that was like what five years ago, six yeah. years ago. You guys were working with For Show Magazine a lot with Joseph. That's my brother right there. Joseph. That's who studio I used to be at when I ain't had no money. He go home. I'm still in the recording. That's <laughs> my guy. Joseph in fashion, man. I was trying to get. I was trying to get him on the couch. He's like, I'm too shy to be in front of the camera. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but his story is like you gotta think of he all he's been through. He's a real gatekeeper too. For real? Hell, man, hell, why, why wouldn't Joseph be a gatekeeper? He started off shooting their videos. Oh, yeah. Then he started off letting everybody use his platform to put their videos higher, even though it probably did help him at the same time, but it helped him help them at the same time. Yeah, but he was, like, one of the first ones to do it in an actual professional-ass manner mm -hmm. and use these platforms. Even that to signing people. He was signing people years ago, all type of shit. Yeah. That was crazy. He had a crazy. Rich. He had a. He told this motherfucker rich. <laughs> he got a. He got a crazy run, don't he? Yeah. My and guy. then 
with a uh, Montclair bubble, that's when I think QC kind of gets signed of you, right? Is that kind of around that time where they're taking No, off? actually, everybody probably think I got signed off Montclair bubble. I got signed off a song called Impatient. So when you went to New York, is that where you showed them and that's what they were like, okay? Or is that before? I didn't even go to New York to meet QC. I went to New York to meet like three different labels. And Wayno ended up getting signed like that same day. And the person who was moving me around was like one of Wayno's best friends. Yeah. He ended up sending my music like two in the morning. And by like three o'clock the next day, I was on the phone with P. Yeah. And to this day, it's still everybody's fucking trying to get signed to QC. Yeah. After like Vezo did it and you did it, everybody's like, I'm gonna get there next. I'm not, I'm on that bitch. <laughs> and now it's it's like a it's a staple, bro. Like Empire is huge right now too, right? Like Empire's signing fucking they everybody. Did. Like everybody's trying to get signed. You know what's crazy if you read some of your YouTube comments though, when people talk about previously to post you signing, some people are like it was the worst decision you ever made. And mm. I always like look deeper into them, like, why do y'all think it's so bad for artists to sign? Like what what makes Everybody people think? Everybody think independence, but you got to have a whole structure and have your shit together for that independent shit, too. Yeah. So do you think if you did more research and studying and developed that, would you have done that versus signing? You or? got time to go research, study, and develop. <laughs> then go to the studio and make a hit. You got that shit planned out. If you can do that, that's crazy. Yeah. And have a bag behind you and market it and get it out to all these platforms you would never be able to contact in a million years. Just because you got a bag behind you on me, you're going to necessarily have a hit. You're just going to be a nigga who pay your way in the dough. Everybody like niggas like that. Put their money where their mouth is. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. I was talking to um, I was talking to RJ recently. He's opening up a studio. Lamont. And, uh, yeah. and He's opening one in Southfield. And... Uh, we were both talking about the scene, man, and we were talking about how it doesn't feel as strong as it used to be. Like, it feels like it's going through some type of phase where the succeeders are really succeeding, but the people who haven't really touched success yet, or even the... You're saying through the city or the world? Oh, the city. No, for sure the city, yeah. The for, world. The world going through that. The right? whole world's going through that with music. We're talking about music, though, for sure. But I still feel like who just... I still feel like the world going through that. The world is going through some bullshit. And a lot of people think it has to do with social media and people comparing each other to each other. Because you said, like, succeeding. as like, other than, like, the people who's already going crazy in the world. That's why I said the world that's going that. I don't know, man. Those fucking computer geeks are making a bag right now, bro. All that cryptocurrency shit and whatever the fuck they're doing. <laughs> Nobody ever thought those guys were going to get pussy. Look at fucking Jeff Bezos, bro. This guy left his <laughs> bitch. To fucking go marry some other girl, or he's fucking around he now. Busting halves down every seven years. He got to split that shit in half every seven years. Ain't yeah. he? Oh, you probably making him sign that prenup, bro. Bill Gates, his wife let him see his high school girlfriend once a month every year, as like his little play time of the year. Like Bill Gates' wife would be like, "You can go hang out with your girl for one month, and then that's it." That was like, that's how you know how rich you have to be to do some that's shit rich like this. As hell, <laughs> You ain't gotta be Bill Gates rich to do that shit. Yeah, you don't have to be Bill Gates rich, but you gotta be on some type of level to fuck. Go get two hoes, four dollars a piece, and you go have your feel a little threesome eight day. Three. I've had a threesome halfway before. It was fired. Halfway? How the fuck did you have it halfway? Because man, apparently I wasn't paying attention to the other girl enough. So like when it was time for the other girl to ride me, the girl I was with. <laughs> She's like, nah, she's like, nah, this is weird now, this is weird. Oh my god, she, you were showing one too much attention. Yeah, because I You supposed to have been hitting her, having her eat her. I don't know how to do all that, bro. I just I all I knew was I was there. You ain't watch pornos growing up? Bro, they're paid to no fucking diddy. be there. They're paid to be in the fucking pornos and do what the fuck you're saying. You think I'm gonna tell her like go do this and that? So you when I was a kid, they had crazy ass triple triple X black. That's the shit you need to go. You need to go see that type of shit that'll help you out, bro. Look at me, man. What? Do you think a motherfucker like me is gonna tell three bitches to be like, oh yeah, you go do this, you suck on my balls while you lick my toes? Like, you think I'm gonna be able? To... You better not be having them lick your toes. I love, I love licking toes. I don't love having my. Well, I don't love having my toes licked. I love licking toes. You know, some freaky. Ass. I love sucking toes, man. Come on, man. You know you're freaky in your own you just, way. So you just slipped up and told the world you'd be like, get your toes licked. <laughs> <laughs> it's only it depends on who who's doing it, bro. Oh my god. Well you so what you don't got something that like you got your own thing, obviously. Mm-mm. 
Do you let girls suck your ring finger or something like Mm-mm. that? That's your little fetish. Everybody's got a fucking fetish, bro. At least I'm. You know Why what? the ring finger? Why you pick the ring finger? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. At least I'm G enough to admit it, bro. Like I'm. I I have fucking a fetish. What? Nobody else in this motherfucker has a fit. Like, look, everybody, everybody's looking at me angry. Everybody got a fit. Hey, man, this whole thing's a setup, bro. I'm telling you right now. There's no way I'm getting out of this it's bitch alive. This man's in here looking at you like, yo, toes, though. <laughs> you ain't gonna have a long conversation when we leave, yo, toes. Yeah. What's, what's been new for you just on a personal scale, man? Uh, just handling- I got my son, man. I'm trying to learn how to, well, not trying to, yeah. I, I am trying to learn how to be a father. You feel me? I ain't had my daddy when I was a kid, so that's something I'm trying to make sure. I stick around and do what's right. Yeah, what's the, what's been the experience? Uh, they first of all, when you first figured out that you were going to have a son, what was that like? Crazy, like I'm having another me. It's another you. It's crazy. You feel what I'm saying? I'm gonna be able to pick his shoes out. Well, I'm able to pick his shoes out, pick his outfits out, exactly the shit that I wear. You feel what I'm saying? That shit's expensive as fuck. I didn't know. You already but, tried doing that. Hmm? You already tried doing that? Like I'm already, already doing it. He got his rolly, his chain, everything already. He won. Yeah. Get it out the way early. Don't tell me you put the buffs on him already. No bro. buffs. I don't wear glasses. I don't wear buffs no more. Why? I love buffs, but I don't wear them no more. For what? For what reason? I, don't know, I wear like black glasses. I just put black glasses on all the time. It's because everybody else is wearing them? Probably or I don't want nobody to look in my eyes. Oh, I'll yeah. be high. When, I, I don't know how I would feel if I was about to have a fucking kid, but I'd probably move out the country. So for you... Why? Because, bro, I'm not trying to have... You would move out the country. Bro, having a kid is an 18-year project, bro. Fuck, it's not 18 years. It's all life until you die project. Exactly. You're going to put a year on it when you just give up? That's what I'm saying. You're 18. I'm done with your ass. <laughs> you hear me? Every, you're on your own. Uh uh-uh, uh, that's all. That's every day you're gonna have to teach them something. Everything that you go through, you gotta teach them. They're gonna still go through it. It's like us. Like, we you know how many times we bumped our head? Yeah. You feel me? So now when my son bumped his head, he just bumped that motherfucker. Like, you did it yesterday. Why would you go do it again? Man. Yeah, but that's too much for me, bro. I mean, I already fucked up my life enough. Bro, I gotta raise another motherfucker. Like, mm-hmm. uh, that's what for you. So that's where you fucked up at. You gotta make sure he don't fuck up at. Or just not. Have I'm about f- to be one of them press like press his ass to play basketball. I know you're supposed to do that because that's how you fuck the kids up. That make them. That make them go through everything they they wanted to do. But fuck this street shit. It's, you feel me? It's a whole other bag somewhere else. I wanted the baby. I man, I've been with my girl for a long time. I wanted the baby for a long ass time. Be honest, bro. When you figured out it was a boy and not a girl, does that change anything, or did you not give a fuck either way? I really didn't care what I was going to have, but I was hoping for a boy. I was praying for a boy mm-hmm. just so I can get the experience, mm-hmm. give the experience that I didn't get. Uh, now he's iced up already, goddamn. You feel me? But then, I ain't going to lie, it's something that I learned, like, other than, like, my family, like, my immediate family, the people that I wake up call every day, that's a, a love you ain't got to question. If not, you got a like everybody got a girl, and you can you got you gonna have to question if she love you every day, even though she gonna tell you she love you. You feel me? That's why I be want to be in other people's minds so I can see what you think about me. But how would you want to do that? If what you mean? Why? Who gives a fuck what somebody else perceives you as? I still be want to go in there and see. Right, all right. So if you want Detroit's perspective from what I from what I know, top ten rappers in Detroit, one of the coldest flows. I wasn't even talking about with the rap. Oh, the people in person? Life. Yeah. yeah. I don't give a fuck what they think about. And music? Yeah. Like, but in person? I don't know. I mean, it sounds like, I don't know, I, I never really gave a fuck. But then again, I have nothing really to, like, give a fuck about. So I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Bro, you're more responsible of a human being than me. You got to realize this right now as we sit across from each other. I'm not rich, man. Like, bro, if I was rich, man, I wouldn't be thinking about nobody. I give what a is fuck. rich to you? R- rich? Yeah, like, like you saying rich with a lot of money? Look at your shoes, bro. Fuck, these some Jordans, bro. All right, look at these. What size shoe you wear? I wear eight. You wear an eight? Yeah. These are eight and a half. You want them? No. Nah. You sure? I don't want to take shoes from you. You ain't taking them. I'm about to take them off my feet and give them to you. I would. I mean, I would appreciate it, but no, I can't do that. You sure? Yeah. I'm, I'm leaving them here. You can't, man. I'm positively leaving these here. I can't let you do it. Man. I promise you. Damn. Hell, he's gonna throw See, them at you. 
But that's the no, whole I'm point. No, I'm not. I'm about to leave him right here. And I just proved my point. That's what rich is right there. That's not rich, bro. I've been giving. Let me not say that. I, but I've been. I've been. I, I. I. I love giving, bro. I love giving. Even when I ain't have a lot of money, I was giving. Like, I don't know. I always been like that. Even when like the funds were limited, it's like you were reaching out to people and helping people out. This shit ain't been this crazy. Like this shit ain't been like this all my life. I mean, Hell you, yeah. you said you were making money since school. I mean, that's a lot. I still ain't had this shit that I got right here. Yeah, but as that's, a, this is a whole, this was different. As a kid, eighteen thousand dollars or whatever the amount of thousands and thousands of dollars is like a million dollars at that age, bro. Right. Then you blow that shit tomorrow and realize how the fuck did I even drop out? How'd you blow the money at that age? What were you spending? I, on? I go to True Religion every day. Then I'm gonna wake up tomorrow <laughs> and make the same amount of money. Go to True Religion the day after that. I ain't learned how to start like holding my money until I was like fucking 16, 17. Like holding it, keeping it. And I moved out at fucking 15. That mean I had to still pay rent. I when like me moving out taught me how to like save my money. Like, all right, nigga. I understand what my mom was saying. She like, bro, I gotta pay bills on the first. That shit. Guaranteed. Ain't no, I'm gonna give it to you next week. All right, you got it next week, we're gonna kick your ass out. Yeah. That's how I learned how to start keeping my money. How that, so if you move out to, at that fucking age, is it by yourself moving out or with no, other I people? I moved out with my girl. Oh, god damn, that's tough. At 14 years old, you had a girlfriend and you moved out with your girlfriend? Yeah. To like your that's, own crib? I swear. That's fucking insane. That's my big brother, he'll tell you. Facts? That's my big brother. That's my big brother. That's my little cousin. Yeah. I've been living in my own house since I was 14. Yeah, I've 15. Been how do you get the lease signed? How do you? Do it? My yeah. girl was graduated that year. Everything is in her name. Damn. Oh, so you dating the girl that was? Or how old was she? Seventeen or eighteen, Man. one of them. I mean, doing pretty good for a fourteen-year-old. Hell yeah, good. hell yeah. I might not believe it, but they—they they probably think I'm lying. We in a different time, like we in 2012, 13, 14, 13, 14 when. We making ten thousand dollars. Then we not no kids. Like we not actually in the mind as kids. You feel me? Like, and they probably you know, think I'm lying. No, <laughs> do you think? Do you think I'm lying? No, like, why would I ever think you're lying? Because I, I know sometimes I just I, I let shit come off like it ain't it ain't shit. Like no, I mean that's insane. When I was fourteen years old, I don't remember what the fuck I was doing, but I wasn't buying a fucking house. That was. Something I thought I was gonna do when I was twenty eight or some shit like that. Mm -mm. There's people who are thirty; they're not buying their own fucking cribs right now as we speak, bro. But we gotta live in reality. It's nine. My mama got nine kids. We first crib was two bedrooms. Two bedroom, nine people plus her. That's ten people in one house. Let's just think about that. Yeah. I ain't never had my own room until I turned twelve. I lived in Ham Tramick. And my room, for some reason, always was the walkway to that nigga room right there. <laughs> Every time, even, I swear to God, all my rooms, you got to walk through my room, then you go to his room. Like, yeah. he really had the privacy. Yeah. You feel me? So you they had did to me that. dirty, did they? You ain't going to say that. So you had to get the fuck out of there. Not had to, because that's what made me me. Like, you yeah. feel me? I'm like, them. Them they made me my yeah. brothers. Yeah, that's, that's what made me drop out too, following their ass, seeing the money, and doing seeing the shit they do every day. Are you saying in retrospect you wish you didn't drop out? When I get here right now, hell, I don't give a fuck what I would have done. You see who I am right now? No, oh, yeah, I ain't got no regrets. Yeah. When I dropped out, everybody was like, just get your GED. It's going to make you feel better. And I was like, I don't think it's going to make me feel better. I, hey, you know they made me do that. Let me keep it 1,000. Let me keep it 1,000. They told me that so much. I felt dumb without it. Like, <laughs> so many people was telling me, like, you got to get your GED or something. Then I caught a case. And I'm like, oh, let me get this motherfucking GED for the judge. Take me to jail. She realized I'm going to just want some bullshit. You feel me? Yeah. So I only got my GED. I want to got my GED with my big brother. That's fucked up, right? That's yeah. crazy. So the judge was more leaning on you because of the schooling and everything, like because you were trying in life. Yeah, sure, that shit helped. Uh, when you trying to get your shit together, and I was already trying to get my GED before I caught the case too. So, but when you trying to get your shit together, hell yeah, that shit helped. Yeah, man. That's what they be wanting. That's why you get locked up. That's the lesson. Like, oh, you ain't getting your shit together. You still in some bullshit. I'm gonna get you to lock your ass up. Yeah, we just had somebody in that was talking about that the judge's leniency. 
it really they really do look at you as a person and decide like how far, how much they should sentence you some people i still feel like nobody should have the power in life to tell you you about to go sit down and never come out this building for the rest of your life should nobody have that power but god yeah, but you have to see some angles of it that makes how? sense. Like a murderer. How, how do she how do she lock somebody up for driving or drinking, right? Then when you go home, you sip some wine. What do you mean? Drinking and you driving? Like, no, I'm not just saying drinking. You lock somebody up for drink. They lock people up for drinking liquor. Yeah. How you go home and drink liquor right after you lock somebody up? I'm sure she'd be stressed after the day of the judging. That's what always trips me out. Like, are... Can an emotional decision change a judge's Yes, sentence? then they get period. So what if I catch this bitch on her? I mean, what if I catch this lady on the day that she just mad at her husband or something? Now she taking everything out on me. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That's like... Think a, of it like that. What if, like, a rapper hired you to do a feature for him and you were fucking pissed when you went in the studio? It has to be, like, the same kind of feeling. Hell no. Nah. You still do a good they job? They give you that money, you happy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever just made you mad, you ain't gonna th- you're going to think about them after the song. This changed everything. Yeah. You got this money now. Yeah, with judges, it's crazy. There's a lot of footage of them, like, fucking giving crazy sentences. The girl who's listening here... the same shit we do, man. Bro, the girl who's in here, his name, her name was Star Austin. She did nine years for fucking stealing cars from uh, car rental places. Or uh, Nine but, years for taking the car. And you know why they really gave her the nine years? It's because somebody said that uh, one of her friends held somebody on gunpoint while they did it. And she said that never happened. They just added that to the fucking story. But it's like they, if you did that one part, mm-hmm. you basically did that too. Oh, they got, they can lie. <laughs> that's how they look at it. That's what I'm saying. Like they, that's how they look at it. So if you, you ride, you take a nigga car and he car, man, he just took my car and he had a gun. Why wouldn't they? You took the car. You must threw the gun if you ain't got the gun on you when we get you. Motherfuckers lie about a lot of shit. Make a little situation big as hell. That's the crazy part. You can literally twist somebody's whole fucking life with lying. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it is it is crazy what the police can fucking do. With your situation, though, yours was just because you violated probation, right? So it wasn't oh. even, like, initially what got you taken away. It was like, you just didn't do the probation part right, and that's why they, f- like, got you, basically. Oh, man. What? Well, yeah, I violated probation. That's what I'm saying. Isn't that what... The, that's yeah. why they put you where they put you, so... But... I mean, you bounce from it pretty quickly, right? Like, for you, your mindset's kind of... Yeah, but it stopped me from going on tours. Which uh, which tour did you miss? I was going on tour with Ray V's. Damn. That first tour. I think that was the Mob tour. Yeah, maybe missed that tour for sure. At least you're making... You guys are all making music together and shit. Yeah, you got yeah. You got to take a uh, track with V's and shit. You got to yeah. track with all those guys. Some people I knew before. All this. Yeah. That's why all these all these, motherf- all these motherfucking rappers that are actually friends with each other, I feel like there's like secret meetings y'all be having and like, oh, oh yeah, man, what the meetings, fuck up man. everybody in this bitch? I, I feel man, it, bro. You tripping? See, he's you know, he's, you know, you know why he's making that face because he hey, knows. No, he he told me it'd be secret meetings. <laughs> you think this shit Illuminati? <laughs> I swear to God, it has to be. It would be smart to do it. It'd be like, crazy look. when you see us together. You probably catching us. We are probably on the same show or something. Everybody been moving around. It's the first time we didn't see each other. That happened a lot. Yeah. Does anybody ever tell you you look like Lil Meech? Little Meech? Yeah. The BMF? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> That's the first. I look like Meech. Anyway, am I kidding? Yeah. He looks like Lil Meech. That nigga light skin. That's my brother, though. I don't <laughs> think we the same. We is not the same complexion. I mean, you're like mid light skin. Am I tripping, Nick? Definitely different. He definitely different. <laughs> Nick on some see, bullshit. See, see, Nick on some bullshit. Bro, I know <laughs> shit. <laughs> when, when people have to <laughs> pause, <laughs> hey, bro. When oh, people no have to diddy, pause, man. when people yeah. have to pause, <laughs> wait, wait come on, bro. You got it right. Bro, because one time a picture popped up of him and I was like, oh, baby money, what the fuck is he doing out there? And then I'm like, man, that's fucking little me. I'm telling you, bro, you guys look exactly yeah. the fucking same. Dude, he be smoking when he ain't nothing. You can play his, like, who is that? Y'all be the judge here. There's that one on the bottom left. That's <laughs> dark right there. See? That's that like like me. See? Oh, shit. I thought y'all was going to give me the nigga who playing Terry because I got the lazy eye. Damn, I thought y'all was going to give me him out of everybody. 
Nah, man. I'm talking about Lil Meech. Lil Meech is like the best person to fucking be from BMF. Out of everybody. Do you keep up with that shit? Do you keep up with like, those TV series, like the Tubi series and all that stuff? For sure. What's your favorite Tubi movie? Oh, I do not, bro. I'm on like three movies on Tubi, bro. And I haven't seen them, bitch. You bought three of them and you just haven't watched them yet? No, I'm in them. Like, oh, you're in the movies? Yeah. But oh, I'm not like act, actually acting, like, but I'm probably in a scene or two and I haven't seen them. Why don't you just check the motherfuckers out? I don't know the fucking names, <laughs> man. <laughs> I do not know the name. When people be calling me back, I just sent you in this movie. I be feeling like a movie star sometimes. I ain't even seen the shit. I be lying to them. I be on YouTube all day, not listening to music, watching crazy ass videos all day. What do you watch? Fights, people getting shot. That's fucked up. <laughs> Did you watch that shit where they interrogate people for like, and like convict them, like in the interrogation out in the interrogation room videos? Yeah, you didn't watch all this shit. Those are my favorites. Just watching people You're fold. You're a fucking serial killer. Who? You. Me? That's what you be doing on your off days? What? You like oh, watching shit like yeah. that? No, I watch this shit all the time because I'm just like, let me see how fucked up other people's lives are so I feel better about my life. Like, you're about no. to go to prison, bro. Like, for the rest of your life. That, 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 hell no. You don't wish jail on nobody Somebody unless they did some girlfriends? fucking, bro. fuck his girlfriend. If they ain't did nothing to no kids <laughs> or there's no wild ass shit, you don't wish jail on. Bro, serial killers need to go to jail. I don't give a fuck. Serial killers in which ways? They just, they don't even deserve to go to jail. They what? murdering people, shooting them. What if he just a serial killer just walk around and shoot people? Why wouldn't he need to go to jail? We ain't got nothing to do with that. He ain't shot you. <laughs> you feel me? Man. That's what you. That's the only thing you worry about. You see, that's you're too deep into the code, man. You got to break away from the code. I ain't into no code. I wouldn't mind the nigga gonna start bothering you if you bother him. <laughs> <laughs> Why you think about him? He ain't serial killer. Nothing over here. He gonna fight out of Detroit. Bro, there was a guy in Detroit that was like swinging axes at people in the middle of the night. And I wouldn't. I was like, I'm not going back. You ain't even want to go outside. I was not going back. I had a show to go to. Polly Shore was coming in town. I was like, I'm not gonna go watch that. So shit. when you be seeing little shit like that, you be like, man, I gotta make sure I don't go on that side, so I won't run into that person. Look, the curtains, I close them with a twist. Like I'm not trying to see anything out that window. <laughs> but when I used to start fights with people on the internet, I used to be like, oh, I'm going on vacation for like three months. You really just be at the crib. I used to tell my friends to send me pictures of them in Hawaii and shit. I'd be like, I'm gonna use that for my story post so that people think I'm not in Michigan. Somebody right now. catch your ass at the light, bro. And this nigga told me he in Hawaii. <laughs> I used to be lying. I'm like, I'm not trying to die today, bro. Let me figure out how to squash this beef and then I'll come back. Mm. I used to call my friends. He's like, Yo, man, can you go call Jay? Why you ain't call them? Y'all just meet up with the other people and fight them. Because people had guns and I didn't at the time. People ain't gonna shoot at you Bro I'm not a civilian bro You might think that But I'm not a civilian Cause I'm in the rap You're a celebrity game. That's what I'm saying So I can't snitch That's why the thing You can't snitch If you wasn't a celebrity <laughs> Nah man <laughs> Civilians are allowed To do whatever they wanna do That's true So I'm not a civilian See you just tried to trick me Into saying that I would snitch Cause I'm not a civilian But I am not a civilian See what I'm saying You can't snitch period I would never snitch that's good. It wouldn't happen. You a fighter, nigga? No. Why? Because I get my ass whooped, man. Are you not seeing this, bro? Why you ain't confident? That don't mean nothing. The smallest people I don't know knock people out. I don't know how to fight, You B. probably got that strength in you that's just knocking it out. Every fight I've gotten into, I lost. So I kind of learned. How many fights you get into? In my whole life, from school till now, like eight. You ain't lose all eight fights. I lost every fight. How do you know? Because I never... I don't even remember all this shit. I never lost a fight, though. A nigga socked me, though. A grown nigga socked me in a party. Man, I was probably like this around. I was like 12, 13. Nigga socked me so hard. That's when I knew, like, yep, a nigga ever tried to sock me like that again. What'd you do? What'd I do? Yeah. Nigga, my brothers and them beat his ass. Oh. <laughs> Did he cheap shot you or is it like prepared? Were you prepared for No, my man snatched his buffs. Uh, and my man's ran with the bus, but I was still right there. I should have just been on my shit and knew what was going on. That nigga hit me so hard. I seen that nigga three different times. <laughs> cause, hey, cuz that nigga hit me. It was a blur in my <laughs> eye. Like, damn. That was the last time you ever got hit. 
Yeah, for sure. That was probably the first time a nigga hit me like that. Is it still like if somebody hits you, it's just you hit them back? Nigga or? ain't gonna hit me. Not anymore. I mean, nigga, nigga, nigga never hit me other than that. <laughs> no, and I'm saying like when you're at that level, the whole city will beat somebody's ass or kill somebody for a rapper. They will. Doing People that, will slide for me. Imagine what they'll do for you. Nobody doing shit. That'd be a good slogan. <laughs> Don't ask what your rappers can do for you, but what you can do for your rappers. Tell them what's going on. I seen you on a bootleg Kev podcast, man. Um, I feel like he's he's like my favorite podcaster to watch that's actually involved in hip hop. I feel like he's fuck with Bootleg Kev. He be everywhere. I look up Bootleg Kev be in Vegas with you at the club. How you I ain't <laughs> shit. Yeah. But I feel like he's the most well rounded of all like the hip hop podcasters. Yeah. Like on a personal level. Wallow. Like, hmm? Wallow and Gilly. Yo, Wallow and Gilly don't let people talk, bro. What you mean? Like, when I seen the video you guys did yeah. together, and you got to talk, but I feel like they talk way more than the person that's with them. They ask this question. Ain't nobody really putting their feet on land like him. Ain't nobody really flying to them states going to the ghetto. Yeah, that's true. Like, going to the ghetto. Like, he walking through the hood with you, you feel me? Ain't he comfortable? Some people be scared, you feel what I'm saying? Even though ain't nobody trying to do nothing to you, but the scariness be like, you feel me? It be offensive. Kind of, you feel what I'm saying? Like, don't be scared, bro. We actually happy you over here. But him, he going, he done went to every 50 states, 50 different hoods. And he come ask you the questions that he feel like he went through too. So Wallo and Gilly is like big in the hip hop world for sure, for sure. How long were you watching them before you guys actually ended up working together? Uh, I met him on his, damn his first video he ever did, or second or third, the one when he came down here with Peasy. Oh, yeah. That's like probably his fourth video. He's by himself, doing it off his phone still. And that's how I ended up even getting mine. But well, you mine, knew about him for way longer than that, though, I'm saying. like Yeah, you, from like the Instagram videos and stuff. I'm talking about actually chopping it up with you then see that this person is really just like you. It ain't, it ain't no act. You know, we thought that was an act for a minute, him running in that rain. and Oh, yeah. We thought that was an act. Like, man, you setting this up. You feel me? <laughs> like, you got to be setting it. Then you really get to meet him. You see him, man. He landing at... 4 a.m. and yo shit, going to a whole nother state at 4 a.m. the next day. Like, oh, no, nah, he really doing that. Ain't no. He by himself, too. Damn, man. <sighs> yeah, the, the, those guys are definitely well-rounded. I I mean, from my perspective, they're, they're, they have a wealth of knowledge, so I understand why they talk a lot. I'll put it that way. Like, they're so fucking smart that they know more than most. The people I can't stand for real is, like, Joe Budden's too much for me, man. I don't know what the fuck this motherfucker be talking about half the time. <laughs> and then, like, Adam from No Jumper in his own way kills me, too, because I'm just like, I don't know, man. Podcasting is, is taking a weird-ass turn right now. Yeah, like, I got some little personal shit going on. Who, me and Adam? I don't know. I'll call I'm him right now. He's asking the question. Nah, 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 nah. I don't have no personal problems. Podcasters try to take me down to Detroit. You know what I'm saying? They were trying to... Take my shit down. So I already people had, from here. Yeah. So I already had to Detroit. Hey to man, do. we all should be lifting each other up. Don't be trying to take his shit down. I'm with him. That's what I'm saying. Don't do him like that, man. You feel me? We all should be lifting each other up. It's enough money. We only one state. It's fifty of them. So much money out here. Don't do that to my boy, man. I was gonna call you Lowe's for a second. You can call me Lowe's, bro. I can call you Lowe's, man. Yeah. Appreciate that, Lowe's. Thank you. You feel bro. me? That make you feel bro like that make you feel like bro like Yeah, you gotta it. check first, man. Like, <laughs> it's like you call it, it's like you call me by my first name, like, man. Don't fucking call me by my first name. You feel me? Let me interview you. How you feel doing this shit? It was cool for a while. It's still cool, but I feel like it's very on. Oh, no, oh, you're like the first real uh rapper that's like trending in the moment that's on my podcast ever. So I appreciate you for that. Thank man, you. Man. Nice shit. Uh, yeah. appreciate that. Detroit shit. Motherfuckers, I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's hard, man. Nobody, like, it's hard. Everybody look for some money. Everybody wants to get paid. As soon as you DM somebody, how much, how much you got? Pop up, man. Get y'all some I just paid D. Brown $150 man. to do an interview. You man. supposed to pay D. Brown. D. Brown, you should have taxed his ass mo. <laughs> hey. 
D Brown, I'm be hey, I'm gonna be out here giving cheap interviews, bro. I'm managing him. You want to talk to D Brown? You call me, man. Bro, he rolled up on a bicycle. I was like, I. That's what I'm saying. You supposed to gave him five hundred when you sink that bike. I did not give him five fucking hundred. I said you supposed to after you after he pulled up on that bike and you seen what he did to get here. Is he is he slow? Huh? Is he slow? He fast. You feel me? You supposed to gave him five hundred, man. No, man. That's crazy. Bro, all he did was tell me that. He goes to the strip club. Yeah. And that's all he told me. That's D. Brown. That's the whole interview. What you want He's from like, yeah, him? Yeah, I, I, go, I go to the strip club. I call my mom, let her know what time I'm coming home. That was the entire fucking interview. What's, what you want from me? What you thought you was going to get? I, I was like, are you? I wanted to know, like, who are you? Like, what the fuck? Where He's D. Come? Brown. He go to the strip club. He told you who he was. Yeah. I'm a nigga who go to the strip club, and I tell my mama one time I'm going to be there. If I'm not there when I told my mama, it's going to be a fucking problem. Yeah. That's simple. You only get him one fifty though. Did he pull 50? up on a pedal bike? Yes, man. He pedaled up here, and I was no, like, "No, he didn't, bro." Bro, he did. He sent me his uh, screenshot. I'm like, "Why is it taking you so long to fucking get here?" He's like, "Oh, I'm pedaling as fast as I can." God, he did not drive a man, bro. D bro no, pulled he, up on a bicycle. Man, no, he did, bro. I seen he it. gave you better tip than him, bro. Nah, man. You ain't get him one fifty. That was his Uber. Man, he pulled up on a bike. Can you listen to me when I say something, I'm bro? telling you, the 150 you gave to him, that's why he had to get on the bike. Bro, you know how much money he's about to make from being on my podcast? He's about to make so much You know so how much, much money, money he, he only made for being on your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> what would you, let me ask you a question. What would you do if you had a podcast? If I had a podcast? Yeah. What, you want to know, like, what would I do? Like, what would it be about? Everything. Just what, what's the baby I don't mode? know. Y'all don't want me to have a podcast because I don't think it, I, it wouldn't have no certain, like, topic. I always just get on this motherfucker and speak my mind. And some days I wake up mad. Some days I wake up, you feel me, regular. So I don't think I need a podcast. Yeah, because you it would be too much. Unless I'm talking to like all the young, like it gotta be somebody else gotta set that. Did you up. Get, did, did, as you did you get angrier as you became an artist, or did you become happier as you got an, became an artist? I always been like this. Just this? Yeah. Just chilling. I always been like this. So, I probably was a fucking bad as hell when I was a kid. But what? I don't know. I always been like this, bro. Yeah, like you just smoked a bunch of weed, basically. Literally. I smoke crazy. I've been smoking since I was eleven, hmm. and I can't tell you what, what. I can't tell you a day I didn't smoke. You you haven't skipped the like I'm saying like you didn't take away like a break or anything. No, yeah, when I did that, when I violated. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I was drinking alcohol from like 14 to 33. I just quit drinking alcohol. I drank alcohol one time. I had the worst experience. I don't drink. So you don't drink no more. I take a shot. Other than that, no. what was the experience, man? Just tell us. Nothing. I was just drunk. I was just drunk as hell, throwing up. Yeah, that's normal. That's what about what the fuck happens. No, I remember this day. It was like White Remy came out that week. My mama let me buy it. I had a nice ass true fit on, all red, straight out of Great Lake Crossing. I just did a vanilla reload with my brother. Bust that bitch down. I bought that white lows, white tea, roll on. I remember that. And then he threw up all over the outfit? Nope. Uh, All over the bed, the flow. Yeah. Young nigga. The first time people throw up, they never think to go. <laughs> you nobody, feel me? Nobody ever thinks to go to the toilet the first time they throw up from alcohol. They throw up I everywhere. made it there too. You got to the toilet? Video. I still got the video. Just hanging on the bitch? Just right there screaming my brother's name. <laughs> Telling my brother, come here. Keep saying my brother's name. Sonny. Yeah. Food poisoning is like the second worst way to be throwing up, and then it's alcohol. It's like alcohol, you be throwing up, and you ain't even got nothing to throw up. That shit, yeah, ain't right. Yeah, man. Uh, I was gonna ask you about why I'm so fucking high right now, but clearly you guys are smoking this fucking weed. Yeah, that's what we do. Now I'm getting fucking high. I don't even smoke weed, bro. Film straight chilling. I don't even smoke. I'm just high off the content. Bro, did you see how like? One of my fucking idols growing up, Kel Mitchell, 
did this interview. I mean, who is Kill Mitch? You know I don't know who Kill Mitch is. Bro, is this happening right now? Keenan and Kel, bro. Why you say that nigga whole name? Kel Mitchell? I don't know the last name. I used to live on Mitchell. <laughs> Wait. You, you feel me? You know who Kel Mitchell is? Keenan and Kel. You supposed to just say that off, off the bell. You didn't command my fucking Bro, you, I am realize I'm older than you now. Yeah, I'm 26. Bro, I'm, bro, we're in different generations. Bro, I'm way more mean, wise and smarter than you in everything in life, bro. Yeah. But it just seems like you're smarter than me. Because mm-hmm. people know you, but yeah. I'm smart. I'm the smart one in this smart fucking room. Smart as fuck. I'm telling you, I'm the one who knows what's going on in the world. But but Keenan and Kel is like everybody's generation, though. If you thought that was the way you had over me. Yeah, but check this out. So Kel Mitchell's doing this interview a couple of days ago. Some one of the famous interviewers. I forget who it is. And Kel Mitchell basically explained that his wife got pregnant by another man while they were together. And he stayed with her. Twice. Yeah, I seen that shit. How? What you mean how somebody fucked her, she got pregnant, he stayed? But how, though? Somebody fucked her. She went back home, found out she was pregnant, and he stayed. That's how. You keep saying how, like how. That's how. Somebody dumped her. What I'm saying, though, like. Chimney. You feel me? <laughs> Got the chimney from it. Yeah, so. But you're supposed to leave after that. You're supposed to be like, this is too much. You just had sex with another man and had a baby. Mm-hmm. And now I have to raise this kid. Mm-mm. What do you mean? See, now you understand. No, nah, I've been understood. So, you, I'm saying, don't you see the flaw in that? Yeah, that's him. Oh, come on, man. It's That's just, that's craziness, bro. It's crazy, but that's him. That is him. But it's, what kind of world are we living in where our idols are fucking. Well, that's your idol, man. That's one of my idols, King. Don't, 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 don't be putting things on me. I ain't saying nothing like that. Bro. Well, you, I got the big say, meat. <laughs> you know all, the what he talking about? The fat Albert accent you got going on right now is insane. Bro. Fat Albert is crazy, bro. Do you know who Fat Albert is, man? Yes, bro. Thank I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm not that young. All right, thank God, bro. Fat Albert, bro. That was Fat Albert, 100. percent I don't remember that nigga voice. <laughs> or mixed with like a little bit of Tupac and I mean Biggie, a little bit of Biggie. I'll be biggie then, shit. All right, boys, I'm getting fucking high. So before we close out, is there anything on your mind that you need to tell the audience? Yeah, I feel like the whole world should go download my album, Him, Hustle With Me. Got 16 tracks on there, 15 songs. One track is my dog, Wilo, telling y'all to get up and go get this money. You feel me? Go yeah. buy y'all tickets for the tour. You feel me? Go buy some of that merch. We stepping through the whole summer. We stepping through the winter. Yeah. About to make Lil Cuz start rapping. I got Wheezy going. I got J Bo going. Got all my guys in rotation. We about to take over. That's you something. feel like you, you know what I'm noticing is like only a few select female artists are are like becoming part of the male groups or not even really. We need more Detroit female artists. Yeah. We need more Detroit artists. There's this you girl uh, South North Southwest. She has a song with Mexican OT. My boy Jesus smokes. Like he from here. Happen, but bro, like when I heard that shit, I was like, Why aren't there more female artists? Just she doing from here. It? Yeah, she's around around this way. You but feel me? Th- so anybody from Michigan, bro, especially the girl he just said. When I heard that shit, I was like, Bro, there needs to be way more female artists doing what she's doing because this shit is fucking phenomenal. But like, you got we got Pretty Brea right now, right? Mm-hmm. You got Vay Vanilla. Mm-hmm. Cash Doll. Cash now. Rocky Bad. Man, Rocky we can't Bad, fuck. we only talking about uh Nisha Nisha. Nisha Nisha. Damn, good shit. Dej Loaf. Dej Loaf. How y'all gonna see she, she should have been first. Natasia. Natasia. Natasia's from her. She seen. You don't know that is? Mm-mm. You gotta look her up, bring her on the show. I'll check her out. She can I trust your taste. Bro. I mean, we haven't really talked about you, like your favorite shit in the music scene right now for Detroit. But I mean, from the female aspect, we kind of the got whole it. Detroit. Or are you saying like people that's not not? Let's talk about Detroit as a whole right now. Who are you like? Who do you actually listen to the most? Everybody. I know that. Uh, like listen to every day. Like on a wake up, if I have to wake up, it's gonna be everybody. All right, what about worldwide? Worldwide? What's the playlist? Oh, my playlist, I'm probably low shimmy. 
Tay B, Skiller, 3G Weezy. A little bit of uh, Jay Z in the middle. Blade Icewood still. Still listening to Street Lord Wine. They need to upload rock bottom music back on there. Uh, still listening to Ray. Everybody. Cool. Damn. Baby Money, appreciate you being a part of this, man. Appreciate y'all having me. You know what I'm saying? This means a lot to have motherfuckers that are just dominating the game, pull up on the pod, mm-hmm. tell their stories. Right. Let me take the fall for a lot of shit. Uh, appreciate you doing this, man. We're at Parallel Sound Studio, Hollow Visual Shootings Productions. We're out. It's Peace. raining still. Yeah. Let's do this photo real quick. <sighs> I don't want to give you the shoes. Right? You want to trade me for my forces? No. Are you serious right now? Yeah.